What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we continue to talk about the planning of CINE sequences in cardiac MRI and in particular this time we will focus on how to assess function and structure of the right side of the art. So there are several views that can be obtained to evaluate the RV. One is definitely the short axis view. If you have already watched part one of this video, you're probably already aware about how to plan this kind of scene sequences. However, in case you haven't done it yet, I will leave the link in the description. Part one includes also several information regarding tools that we are going to use today for the planning of RV scenes. So make sure you check it out. The first very specific view of the right side of the art that we are going to study today is the right ventricular long axis, or probably more simply known as RVLA view. So the RVLA is nothing less than a two chamber of the right side of the art, and it can be planned by copying image position on the two chamber of the left ventricle, and from there, we just need to shift our slice into the right ventricle where we can make the necessary adjustments. Do not forget to click perpendicular on the four chamber scene in order to align the slice perpendicular to the reference plane. Once this is done, we can concentrate on prescribing the slice as much accurately as possible through the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve, passing into the right atrium almost parallel to the septum. It might be smart to use a systolic frame for planning as a result of the septal motion in the cardiac cycle. And this is what we obtain from the planning of our first RV scene, a two-chamber view of the right ventricle, or as we said, also called RVLA view. A little reminder about the fact that all these scene sequences have been acquired on a 3 Tesla scanner where artifacts may be a little bit more pronounced than usual. If you are dealing with these issues as well, just make sure you check the video providing tips and tricks on cardiac MRI a 3 Tesla. A variation of the scene sequences that we've just seen consists of the right ventricular 3 chamber view or better known as RV in and out flow. To plan this, again, we start by copying the image position on the two chamber view of the left ventricle and we move our slice into the right ventricle. On either an initial white blood image dataset or the dark blood one, we take the tricuspid valve, the right atrium, the right ventricle and the superior vena cava as a reference and we try to position our slice bisecting each one of these anatomical structures. Pay attention on avoiding the overlapping with the septum. The slice should be very close to it, but not over it. As you probably noticed, this time we did not exploit the benefits of the perpendicular function, as the slice in the short axis view should be kept almost straight in line with the right ventricle. And here we go, a three chamber view of the right side of the art. This latter sequence is kind of important as it enables us to visualize both the inflow and outflow tracts, and it might be very useful in suspected RV pathology. Um, just make sure you do not confuse the RV in and outflow with the RVLA scene, which is kind of a common mistake. So on your left you have the RVLA scene which is the first RV scene we acquired at the beginning while on your right you have the RV in and out flow which is the scene we just finished to acquire. Now it's time to move to something that might be a little bit more familiar for some of you. We are talking about the right ventricular outflow tract or better known as RVT whose acquisition is kind of essential to properly assess the pulmonary valve. But let's see how to reach this kind of view on our MR scanner. So the RVT scene might be sometimes a tricky one to plan. Ideally, we start by copy image position of one of the sagittal images from the localizer. Try if you can copy the position of an image where you can have an appropriate overview of the main pulmonary artery. 
Once this is done, we can proceed by clicking perpendicular on the eggshell view and try subsequently to locate a set of images where we can properly assess the main pulmonary artery and its bifurcation. Once located these images, we should prescribe the slice through the narrowest point of the RVT and into the right ventricle. And this is most likely the result we will achieve, but we can actually do better than this. As I said, this is a tricky one. For the perfect valve alignment and a better quality, a replanning on the coronal of the RVT might be highly suggested. But first, clearly, we need to obtain this additional view, which is actually the RVT in its coronal view. And this is not complex as it might seem. Let's have a look. So, a good strategy for the planning of the RVOT coronal consists of starting by clicking perpendicular, as you just seen, on the initial RVOT view. In this way, we will ensure an optimal valve alignment in the reference plane. At this point, it's just a matter of aligning the slice perfectly perpendicular to the pulmonary valve. Make sure you try to locate the image where the jet of the blood flow is more pronounced as a result of the valve opening. That's the image we want to use for the alignment of the slice. Remember, the RVOT should be visible within the plane throughout the entire cardiac cycle. If it moves a little bit, the image should be repositioned usually by angulating a little bit the slice toward the apex to allow for more significant long axis shortening of the right ventricle. Okay, now we are perfectly on track. We have both the RVT and its coronal view, which is displayed here at the moment. We can now carry on with our original strategy of replanning the initial RVT view. And I'm sure you will find this step pretty easy. So we just append our initial RVT. We can also differentiate this scene from the previous one by renaming it RVT Crosscut, for instance. But clearly, this is up to you according to your preferences. Open the new scene you've just appended and drag both the initial RVT and its coronal view. Now, everything is already planned. Most of the time, there is really no need for massive changes. What we are going to do are just some very minor adjustments on the RVT coronal view. And this can be done by finding the image where the pulmonary valve is opened and aligning the slice through the RVOT following the jet of the blood flow, as you're seeing at the moment. And here we go. All done. RVOT crosscut is available. Sometimes a couple of attempts might be needed for the perfect valve alignment, so no shame if you need to repeat this scene. Just make sure you have a very nice RVOT coronal which is most of the time the secret for achieving the better planning. Eventually, in some protocols designed for the assessment of the right ventricular function and structure, like in case of the ARVC, the acquisition of an RV or transaxial stack might be necessary. But no worries because the planning of this stack is pretty intuitive and there is really nothing complex here. So it's just a initial poor stack that can be planned using the sagittal and coronal images from the initial localizer. We just need to make sure that the stack has enough slices to cover from the RVT to the inferior wall of the right ventricle and uh, let's say a roughly one centimeter intervals. And that's it, the job is done, pretty simple. Some of the images of the RV stack that we just finished to plan and acquire are displayed here. And as we said, this along with the RVLA, RV in and out flow and RVT views are those scene sequences that are mainly acquired for the evaluation of the right side of the art. So with this second part, we officially conclude the chapter related to cardiac MRI planning. Again, I hope you really enjoyed the video and you found it 
no matter the extent, but at least a little bit useful. And if that's the case, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. The appointment is for the next few weeks where new educational material will be released. And I don't know, probably this time there will be something slightly different from Cardiac MRI, but for now, no spoilers, and I'll see you around.